These are the best tech careers to start in 2024. First up is a cybersecurity or an SOC analyst. As you guys know, I worked as a cybersecurity analyst for more than four years, and personally, it's been one of the most fulfilling roles that I've had with a great starting salary, job security, and just really interesting work across the board. This is typically going to be one of the first jobs I recommend to anyone who wants to get into tech or wants to start a career in tech. The first thing I ask is usually along the lines of whether or not they've considered cybersecurity. So what exactly is a cybersecurity analyst? A cybersecurity analyst or an SOC analyst, typically used interchangeably, is really one of the most entry-level cybersecurity roles. In this role, a lot of your job is going to be around monitoring and analyzing network traffic, logs, and any security incident or event data that's typically going to be coming into a centralized place, which for most companies, this is going to look like an SIEM. But because a cybersecurity analyst is such a broad term, there are plenty of other things that you could also be working on. For example, in my last role, my team was less than 10 people and we handled everything cybersecurity related for the company. So this meant security awareness training, phishing, governance, risk, and compliance, security design reviews, handling any incidents that required our input, any security documentation, reporting, external security audits, working with our sales team, our legal team, our marketing team, or anything that has to do with cybersecurity. So as a cybersecurity analyst, there's a lot of things that you could be working on. And I think this is especially true when you're working in a smaller company or a smaller team where your cybersecurity team may not be hundreds or thousands of people, but maybe it's 10, 20, 50 people. And this is typically when you get to work on a lot of different things, which is why I personally think that when you're just starting out in your cybersecurity career, one of the best ways to learn as much as you can is to join a smaller company or a medium-sized company so that you can get hands-on with a lot of different projects. And you may also be leading projects with a lot more exposure, a lot more touch points across different teams compared to a bigger company where you're just working on one specific thing. And each of the roles that we'll be discussing in this video, I'll also be linking a Google career certificate that aligns with that career path. And all of that will be linked in my description below. Thank you to Coursera for sponsoring today's video. But you guys have probably already guessed, the Google certificate that I recommend for cybersecurity analysts or anyone who is really trying to break into cybersecurity is the Google Cybersecurity Professional Certificate. So I've done a few videos already on my channel going in depth into the program. So don't worry, I won't repeat it here, but just at a high level, this is a beginner level certificate that can be completed within six months at seven hours per week. But don't forget that there is a flexible schedule. So it really is up to you how fast or slow that you want to take this program. For example, if you want to complete this in three months, then you can complete it at 14 hours per week instead of seven hours per week and get it done in half the time. And since Coursera is subscription based, that can also mean that your cost may be lower depending on how long it takes for you to complete the program. The course itself has a 4.8 star rating with 200 and 74,000 enrolled as of the time I'm filming this video, which is a very significant number considering that this is a relatively new certificate program. This also goes to show how much interest there is in starting a career in cybersecurity, plus how many employers are actually looking to fill those cybersecurity roles with the very common statistic that I talk about on this channel, which is the fact that there are going to be 3.5 million cybersecurity jobs that are going unfilled in 2025. And that is another reason why companies are trying so hard to hire cybersecurity talent that actually have the skills that they're looking for. In the Google Cybersecurity Professional Certificate, you'll go over the foundations of cybersecurity best practices and impact, how to protect networks, devices, people, and data from unauthorized access and cyber attacks, getting some hands-on experience using SIEMs, as well as with Python, Linux, and SQL, and finally identifying common risks, threats, and vulnerabilities, and techniques on how to mitigate them. So like I mentioned, this is for someone who is completely new starting out in cybersecurity. This is the first course that I recommend taking, and this also happens to prepare you for your CompTIA Security Plus certification, which this program also provides a discount once you complete the program and a dual credential when you complete both. So it really is a win-win if you're deciding to take your Security Plus and you're new to cybersecurity, I would start here. And then of course, starting to focus on cybersecurity projects, which I can link a video on the best cybersecurity projects for beginners that I recently made. You can start a seven-day free trial of the Google Cybersecurity Professional Certificate using a link in my description below. All right, so I knew I'd end up talking about cybersecurity analysts for a very long time. And finally, next is IT Help Desk. So I feel like depending on where you are in your career and what you actually want to do, Help Desk can be a great career path, or it can also be a great stepping stone into a different role in tech. IT support is one of the most foundational roles in all of tech, and this is also one of the areas I think is the easiest to get into. If you're currently a college student, if you're currently a bootcamp student, or if you're learning solo on your own, IT support, help desk are going to be the roles with the lowest bar to get into so you can start getting that experience firsthand. But don't be fooled, just because there are a lot of entry-level IT and support roles out there doesn't mean that this role is any less important than a software engineer or a cybersecurity analyst. Personally, I think IT and SRE go hand in hand as one of the most important roles into keeping the company's lights on and keeping things running smoothly. So as part of the IT support team, what will you actually be doing? This could include things like hardware configs, user configs, installing new software, troubleshooting software, providing access requests, troubleshooting access requests, troubleshooting 
honestly everything across the board, whether it be hardware, software, providing privilege escalations, password resets, and account management, along with things like training and support for users who may not be as tech savvy. But one of the key things is communication. So as part of the IT support team, communication with your customers is really key here, whether that be verbal through a call or in person, communication is really what creates a really good IT support team. And your customers could be internal, they could be external, whether it be employees of the company or it could be external customers. And of course, companies could have different IT support teams for the internal side and the external side. So it really depends on what side you're working on or it could be combined depending on the size of your company and what the team specialize in. But I'm sure if you're watching this video, you've dealt with support, you've dealt with IT help desk and the Google certificate that I recommend looking into for this role is the Google IT support certificate. This is also a beginner level certificate that can be completed within six months at 10 hours per week. Plus with the certificate, you can also earn degree credits. The program itself is ACE approved, which means once you complete the program, you can earn up to 15 college credits, which is the equivalent of five college courses at the bachelor's degree level. You'll be covering topics like customer support from identifying problems to troubleshooting and debugging, how to perform day-to-day -day IT support tasks like computer assembly, wireless networking, installing programs and customer service. And then finally learning how to use systems like Linux, DNS, the command line interface and binary code. In the program, 75% of certificate graduates report a positive career outcome. Plus you'll also get exclusive access to career resources like resume reviews, interview prep, mock interviews, and career support using Coursera's job search guide. This along with being connected to 150 employers in Google's employer consortium with companies like Google, Salesforce, Adobe, and more. And you can start a seven day free trial of the certificate program using the link in my description below. All right, next up is a data analyst. So in a previous life, this would probably have been the career that I would have chosen. When I was a student, I was really into big data, data science, and data analyst roles. A data analyst is someone who collects processes and analyzes large sets of data to help companies make business decisions based off of existing data and trends. This can also include things like data cleaning, data processing, creating data visualizations, creating reports or models, managing the data, whether it's in a database, in whatever format that the data is stored or processed in. So there's a lot that goes into it. And I'm sure a lot of these cross the line between a data analyst versus a data engineer versus a data scientist. And there's definitely different levels of how in depth that you'll get with the data that you're processing or analyzing. But for the most part, you can always think of a data analyst as one of the most junior level roles in that space. This is a great role for someone who is interested in finding trends or patterns in information, going through large sets of data and trying to get a good understanding of what the data is telling you. And of course, whether it be for a technical or non-technical audience. And this is where the Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate comes in. This is a beginner level eight course series with a 4.8 star rating or Coursera that can be completed in six months at 10 hours per week, again, at a flexible schedule. And you can also earn degree credits using this course. You'll be covering data analysis, case studies, data visualizations, data cleaning, creating a job portfolio, metadata and data collection, SQL, data ethics, data aggregation, and R. So as you can see, this is a pretty in-depth certificate program, even at a beginner level. Of course, this will also be linked in my description for anyone who's interested in learning more about the curriculum. But one course I want to specifically call out is data analysis with R programming. R is by one of the most popular languages that is used in the data analysis, data science space, which also means that it's a great addition onto your resume if you're interested in going into data analytics. And this course is really like an introduction to R. So you'll go over functions, variables, data data types, pipes, and vectors, which will give you the foundations of what you'll need to start using R. And because data analytics is also one of the areas in tech that is really big on portfolios and projects, whether it be for visualizations or data projects, this is a great stepping point for the future projects that you'll be able to work on and add onto your resumes and talk about during interviews. Not to mention the Google Data Analytics Capstone, which is where you'll be able to complete your first case study. Our next step is a project manager. So this is a role for someone who may be interested in technology, but maybe not as in-depth in the technical side of things. Of course, there are TPM roles like a technical project manager that may require you to know coding, that may require you to have more technical background. But for many PMs out there, you're likely going to be focusing on the high level things, specifically around the planning, execution, and delivery of a project. This is the person who keeps the project on track. The PM is the person who is typically going to be creating the project proposal, outlining all the project objectives, scope, what is and isn't included in the project, the budget that is involved, all the resources that are involved, whether it be a cross team or a single team, creating project roadmaps around resource management and time allocations, especially if there are multiple projects going on at once. And they may typically be the person who is presenting the project or proposal or the final product to senior management or a leadership team to be able to get final approval or increase budgets or increase scope, all depending on what the project's goals are. And as you may have guessed, we're gonna cover the Google Project Management Professional Certificate. This is a six course beginner level series with a flexible schedule that can be completed at 10 hours per week at six months. This is another very popular program with more than 1 million enrollees with a 4.8 star rating. In this program, you'll be covering project management, change management, organizational culture, 
risk management, quality management, project execution, agile, scrum, effective communication, stakeholder management, and of course, project planning. Uh, this will also be linked in my description if you want to check it out. Now, last but not least on this list is a UX designer. A UX designer is responsible for creating a seamless experience for users on digital products, apps, to improve the usability of a product or service. This may include things like conducting user research, prototyping, visual design, which is probably the area that we see the most because that is tangibly what you can see, wireframing, as well as behavior diagrams and architecture. So anytime you go on a website or an application, the layout was created, planned out, and approved by someone. And of course, while there are teams where the PMs or the developers even create the design of a site, a UX designer is a person whose sole job is to focus on the usability, the accessibility, and the overall look and feel of a website so that it aligns with a company's branding, a company's messaging. But I find that this is also a really great role for someone who is more so on the visual side. And personally, I'm not someone who has a really good eye for design, but I know there are others out there who can create a beautiful website, amazing usability, which oftentimes is now what we expect from sites as users nowadays. So UX design is even more important, especially for big companies with high traffic and high volume websites. The Google UX Design Professional Certificate has a seven core series that is beginner level, where it'll cover skills like user experience, prototyping, wireframing, user experience design, UX research, how to create a mock-up, Figma, usability testing, as well as UX design jobs. The median salary for a UX designer in the US is $112,000 per year with 138,000 US job openings. So now that we've gotten to this point in the video where we've covered five different roles in technology, I also wanted to go over some of the perks that come with a Google professional certificate, specifically around career services, whether it be resume or LinkedIn reviews with personalized feedback or using their interactive interview prep tools like mock interviews. I really think these will set you up for success when you start applying to jobs and interviewing along with the relevant hands-on projects that you'll be working on across these different programs. Another huge pro about Google certificates is the fact that they're all self-paced and 100% online, so you don't have to complete the program within a certain time. You can go faster or slower depending on your personal needs and your schedule. And not to mention that it's affordable and beginner-friendly, where a monthly Coursera subscription comes at a much lower price than a typical cybersecurity bootcamp or UX bootcamp, plus not to mention being able to start with a seven-day free trial, so you can also test out whether or not you like the material, you like the topic, before jumping into it. Plus, of course, not to mention that 75% of certificate graduates report a positive career outcome. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. If you guys have any other video topics you would like to see, any programs you'd like me to review, let me know as well, and I'll be happy to get back to you. I do have a video backlog that I'm really trying to get through, but now that I'm posting once a week instead, I do want to be a little bit more wary about the video topics I'm making and making sure that they're relevant to you guys. And if you're interested in starting a free trial of the Google certificate programs on Coursera, all the links for the programs are in my description. Also, as you can see, I am testing out a new mic. This is, I believe, the second or third video using it. So let me know what you guys think about it. But I also feel like the audio is a little bit too crispy. Thank you again to Rosera for sponsoring today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this video was helpful to you, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.